Hi, I'm Jeff Todd, President and CEO at Prevent Blindness. Welcome to our Focus on Eye Health Expert Series. Joining me today is Dr. Rajiv Ramchandran, Associate Professor of Ophthalmology at the Flaum Eye Institute, University of Rochester Medical Center. Dr. Ramchandran is also President of the Executive Committee of Vision 2020 USA and is the Chair of the Prevent Blindness Scientific Committee. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Jeff. So today we wanted to talk about geographic atrophy or GA. This is a term that a lot of people may not have heard before. Can you explain what that is and how it relates to macular degeneration? Sure, definitely. So um, I'm also a vitreoretinal uh, surgeon and, and specialist at the University of Rochester. So I see a lot of patients who have geographic atrophy, which is related in this context to age-related macular degeneration. Age-related macular degeneration has two basic forms. It has a dry form that it starts out as um, that most people with macular degeneration related to age have. And then it can also progress um, a couple of ways. It can develop into the wet form or the neovascular form. There's abnormal blood vessels that leak and bleed. And this is, have been commonly treated with injections for almost the last 20 years now um, to help um, uh, preserve and actually improve vision in many cases. Um, but the other uh, form that can progress um, is the dry form. It can, it can get worse and cause areas of uh, progressive degeneration or loss of tissue of atrophy in the macular region, which is the center part of the retina. And this is a late stage of age-related macular degeneration as well, and it still stays in the dry form. Um, and as you know, macular degeneration is a leading cause of blindness in the United States um, of those age 65 and older. And the two ways they lose vision is from the wet form or the leaking blood vessels, um, or from the dry form. And in the dry form, they lose a vision through what is called atrophy, or in, in this case, a, a specialized type of atrophy called geographic atrophy. It's called geographic because it is recognized as sharply defined areas in the central retina where there is loss of support cells, the retinal pigment epithelium, the loss of the photoreceptor cells, those cells that convert light into um, the signals that the brain interprets as images, and also the loss of blood vessels that support the retina, the choriocapillaris. And this allows um, uh, our retinal specialists to look inside and see these large areas that look like maps of countries or states, um, unfortunately, um, uh, overlying the central retina, which is the area of your sharpest vision and thus GA causes um, significant vision loss if it does affect the fovea um, or the center of the retina where um, people uh, utilize um, vision for reading and uh, uh, seeing faces and doing a lot of detailed work that is very important to their everyday life. Do most people with the dry type of AMD develop cheap retric atrophy? Uh, no, actually, um, about 20% uh, of those people with AMD um, in general have uh, geographic atrophy. So in a population in the United States where there's about 20 million people who have um, age-related macular degeneration, 1 million people uh, about have uh, geographic atrophy. So it's not everybody but it's not that uncommon either. And in a practice like mine, where you see a lot of uh, macular degeneration due to age, you will see uh, quite a number of patients with geographic atrophy. Yeah, well, and you know, as, as you certainly know, for gosh, coming up on two decades, we've had some forms of treatment for wet AMD, um, but for a long time, we've been waiting for dry AMD and geographic atrophy to have its turn. And so now we're starting to see some treatments for GA, but how did eye care providers deal with this condition before treatments came to market? Right. So um, before there wasn't um, anything we could really uh, do um, uh, treatment-wise in the office 
to improve or to stop the progression of the geographic atrophy um, that many of our patients were facing, uh, unlike the, those who had the wet form or the, the neovascular form where they have choroidal neovascularization, these blood vessels can be treated with the, with the injections of the antibodies that we're giving. Um, so how we dealt with the geographic atrophy form is basically monitoring and encouraging people to refrain from activities that made geographic atrophy or macular degeneration in general worse, such as smoking. Smoking triples the risk of uh, loss of vision for geographic atrophy and also healthy eating. In fact, recent studies have shown that diets that are um, anti-inflammatory actually help to protect um, folks from uh, advanced stages of age-related macular degeneration. So if I was, you know, talk to my patients about healthy eating, all the green leafy vegetables, the different couple of vegetables, avoiding processed foods, um, avoiding um, um, like um, red meat, um, those type of things um, that, and also processed meats as well, um, and, and having a more um, Mediterranean-oriented uh, diet, as, as people would say. Those are the types of things that we were doing before. Um, and also, you know, when the center of the vision was affected, when the fovea, the, the central macula was affected, um, often referring folks to low vision therapy, um, low vision specialists who could help with aids, visual aids, and also techniques to uh, manage with the new visual condition that people have. You know, we are visual creatures as human beings, and vision plays a large part of our daily life. And to have that loss is such a traumatic thing to go through, not only um, in terms of function, but also emotional and social support and uh, socialization in uh, daily life has been really affected by having their central vision loss. So all those things are, you know, what we would counsel on, but as a physician, there was nothing I could provide directly to help um, my patient before me in the chair. Uh, I could just counsel them on all these other things that I would refer them out to um, and, and try to get them help in that way. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm sure you still counsel for healthy healthy behaviors, but it's great to have treatment options out there. Can you speak a little bit about the new treatments as well as what they mean for you as a provider and the patient um, now to have a first and then a second treatment available? Yes, so there are two FDA treatments right now um, available. Um, one has been approved um, in the late winter. Um, Pexetacopalan is the uh, drug name for that. And this, um, as well as its um, um, other compound that, that is out there is have a, a syncoptad pegol. And these are both intravitreal injections. So these are injections that are placed into the white part of the eye that goes into the eye um, uh, cavity, um, the vitreous jelly uh, lives there behind the lens of the eye. So this is in the eyeball itself. Um, this medicine um, has to be given on a monthly basis, uh, generally, although um, uh, some people do receive it every other month. And um, it, it requires chronic treatment. And we often don't know its effect until six months out as it is as the the effects um, are accumulative over time of the medicines and these medicines uh, modify the immune uh, system inside the eye the uh, immune system is what is thought to um, be driving a lot of the changes in geographic atrophy um, and this uh, compound is a component called uh, complement inhibitor and it inhibits this uh, pathway in the immune system to to um, allow for less atrophy, less progression of the degeneration of tissue in the eye, but it requires chronic treatment. And again, we don't know the results until many months out, unlike the uh, injections for the wet macular degeneration, where often people can uh, see improvement in the first few weeks after, after treatment um, in, in some cases. And so um, this is uh, a, an interesting thing when people are getting these injections and may or may not know that it's, it's really causing effect until many months out. So when you diagnose someone with GA, what are some of the most important points that you share with your patients? Right, that's a great question. So I do talk about the various aspects of age-related macular degeneration, the dry type, the wet type, 
um, and what GA uh, means for that patient in terms of their prognosis. Um, if the GA is near to the center of vision, near to the fovea, the, the sharpest area of one's vision, they have a higher risk for um, noticing their blindness and that uh, over time, the vision loss can affect their daily uh, activities of living, reading, um, writing, uh, watching TV, uh, seeing faces and socializing. So that's a more uh, of a pressing discussion of, you know, needing to see low vision therapy or possibly um, beginning treatment uh, with some of the new injectables that are out there for uh, ge geographic atrophy. So that's kind of the conversation. If it's um, more outside of the phobia um, uh, and extra phobia or, or, or you have some time probably till it progresses to affect the vision, then it's a, it's a, you might have some more time to follow up the patients. But now that we have new treatments, um, this is something uh, new that I did discuss with them and seeing if they are uh, considering starting a long course of therapy to see if that can help stabilize and preserve their vision. Um, so I want to turn real quick and talk about care partners. Uh, for, for people who have um, vision vision loss or blindness, care partners can be so important. And at Prevent Blindness, one of our most popular resources is called Living Well with Low Vision. And it has a care care partner section to it. Could you talk a little bit about what your recommendations are to those people who serve as care partners, to those who have vision loss um, or even potential vision loss? Right. So independence is what we thrive on in America. Uh, we want to be independent and, and, and live on our own terms. And, um, you know, our uh, partners in life um, also want to help us to be independent and, and, and want to enjoy life with us that way. So, you know, when a, when a partner suffers from vision loss that is debilitating and is going to cause them not to be able to handle a lot of the activities of daily living that are used to, especially driving. Um, you know, we are a country of drivers on our own. We, we don't have as much good public transportation like some of the other places of the world. And so um, loss of being able to drive is a huge thing. And how do you tell someone that, you know, look, we have to consider that it's it's not safe to drive. And how does a family member do that? So a lot of emotional and social um, issues that have to be dealt with, as well as caregiving issues. And a lot of this can cause a lot of stress uh, to that relationship, the partner relationship and, and on the partner. So uh, understanding what's in store may be uh, the best education. So fortunately, the National Eye Institute um, has uh, See What I See, which is a virtual reality tool that you can get a, a pair of uh, you know, of uh, cheap glasses to to view a viewer to to see this. You can actually get it on your phone and you can actually view these with some um, some uh, um, 3D viewing glasses and uh, and you can actually get a sense of what it is to walk around with um, uh, vision loss in, in, in a simulated way. So that's a good thing to kind of tell people what does GA or what does advanced age related macular degeneration look like for the person and they get a sense of what the environment is. Um, other things, there's support groups. Um, there are a lot of uh, support groups for low vision and people with macular degeneration. Um, I know that Prevent Blindness is doing a lot of advocacy and, and training and involving people who are caregivers and who are family members of those with vision loss. And so those are great ways to kind of develop that uh, 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 association with a network that needs to be there to to keep people going and keep people with hope that you know we can get through all of these things that come and challenges that come our way. Absolutely, and and yeah, as, as you mentioned, at Prevent Blindness, our website is preventblindness.org. You can find all sorts of resources on caretaking and on living well with low vision, and even resources on mental health and vision, which is so important. Um, as well as obviously geographic atrophy and AFD. Um, so thank you for your time today. But it, before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to add about geographic atrophy, low vision, or eye care in general? Sure. So one of the things to know is that um, geographic atrophy um, is, is not... Um, um, so common out there that you know you every other person in the street may not have it but 
but it is common. Over a million people in the United States do have it. Um, as the population of the United States is aging, especially over 65, you're going to get a higher rate of people having geographic atrophy. Um, it does increase with age. So those people over 75, especially 80 years old, we're going to get a lot more people at that age group uh, are going to see this. Um, it does affect those who are of a Caucasian uh, white um, race uh, more than those of um, African-American or Hispanic race. Um, so those are things to consider um, in the population that, that, that we're working in. But it's also talking to your physician. It's really important that you need to understand um, the social circumstances, what it means to have treatment in, in the space. Um, if it's going to be injections every month, what does that look like? How are you going to plan for all these things? And it's great that Prevent Blindness um, has been a champion for patients and, and, and the public on eye disease and especially for GA now. Um, and so there's a lot of great resources out there. And I really do encourage you to go to the preventblindness.org website to check out all this information and to learn a lot also about other eye diseases that can go along with geographic atrophy, such as glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy. And all these things can affect vision in various ways. And so it's really important to be educated and stay educated and advocate for vision. One of the areas for advocacy in, in, uh, in geographic atrophy um, patients is uh, low vision resources. Um, unfortunately, a lot of all states provide that resource. Um, in my state of New York, you have to be legally blind to qualify for some of those resources. And not all patients with geographic atrophy um, end up legally blind, but they do have vision loss that is severe, even though they're not legally blind. So all these things need to be considered. And I encourage all those people interested in this topic to check out the website, preventblindness.org, for more information. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your leadership on our board. Really appreciate you. My pleasure, Jeff. Thank you for having me.